wanted to tell you about a new technique I've been playing with for doing Photoshop composites. So to give you a bit of an introduction, I kind of came up with this concept for a piece I wanted to do, which is Vader on Hoth. So you can see here, I've done a sketch of this. So the idea is it's kind of the snow fields with the Atats marching in. You can see there in the background, all faded out by the snow and atmospherics. And then you got Vader up front here with his lightsaber drawn, ready to slash down some rebels, etc. Uh, and then sort of compositionally, I've got what would be a snow tro trooper over here on the left um, that just sort of balances the scene out in terms of, I guess, the weight of light shadow, that kind of thing. So this is the great power of um, painting out sort of a rough thumbnail sketch in Photoshop. Um, but what I realized with this is because it's such a kind of key scene in terms of perspective, um, the weight and size of objects in it because what I wanted to achieve was obviously you've got these characters which are very very close to the lens so to speak uh, and then I wanted to pepper in little snow snow troopers which I haven't drawn on the mock-up here but then obviously the attacks are huge and they're further away in the background so if you think about that that's balancing a lot of things in terms of their relative size where they would be in depth everything else so um, lining up the sort of perspectives of all those to make them seem realistic so I thought about this and I thought it's probably about time I started playing with 3d software to try and get some of those sizings and perspective um, problems rendered out in 3D so that I could then bring it back in Photoshop and have a really, really accurate kind of map for where to put at-ats and stormtroopers, etc., to get a nice realistic looking composite. And I'll show you the results in a second. So over here is kind of what I've done in Blender. Now, I should have said this at the outset, this isn't gonna be a tutorial in Blender. Um, I mean, I pretty much achieved this in a day, having never used Blender um, before. And all I did was go through the fundamentals course on Blender, uh, probably went through about 40, 50 minutes of it to get the basics down pat, quickly sort of got into using it. And then I was just sort of Googling various things. How do I do this? How to do this um, to get more specific sort of uh, techniques to pull this together. So an understanding of the camera and various other things, user interface, uh, all of which you get in the sort of first hour of doing the fundamentals course, which is on Blender's YouTube channel. I'll put a link below in the description. Um, the models here, obviously I didn't create myself in a day. Uh, there are a whole bunch of free uh, libraries, marketplaces, if you like, of both free and paid Blender models people have done. So I just searched for the two things I needed, which was a Stormtrooper, which I'm obviously using to substitute for a Snowtrooper. And again, another one for Vader. And then an Atta up there in the, at the back. Now, I haven't done anything with these in terms of posing, trying to get their legs right or anything like that. For me, it was very much just an exercise in spreading these out through the camera view to try and match the composition. So one thing I've actually done, which, uh, oh, there we go, that's it. So that's the camera view of what I have been sort of moving objects around in. So you can see like I've got this stormtrooper up the front here that is one that I might wanna move around. So I've been making sort of very, very sort of fine adjustments to get each of these in position. So it sort of resembles my sketch. And then if I zoom out a little bit, oh, gone outside the box and go up the back, you can see I've got the three attats in there. I could do the same thing with them, uh, select those. Now, this is one of the problems with Blender I'm sort of getting to grips with, and it's more to do with the model I've got that this is gonna move the top of the attat and not the legs. Maybe I'll skip over that, um, but you get the idea. So the idea was to come in Blender spread this out and you can see immediately like this scene to achieve what I wanted to get in Photoshop where I've got this uh, trooper up front who's much bigger this would be Vader and then spreading out these sort of battalions of the small stormtroopers here the ones here the ones here the ones right at the back um, 
now I can start to see their sizing, like what are their relative heights just based on how they're spread out. And and as I was about to say, like once you look at it from this angle, you can see it doesn't really match what's in your head when you think about it two-dimensionally. So it's very useful to have this kind of mock-up to go, oh, okay, th this is how it would work. Um, I would never have got these kind of positions and sizings for the stormtroopers and indeed the attets in terms of the line of sight through the picture if I just tried this in Photoshop alone. The other thing that's really, really cool with Blender is you can play with light. So over here, I can turn on all the shaders and light effects I've got. And now I've got a really, really good model, not just of the positions of um, the various things in the scene, but what the lighting needs to look like for me to achieve a realistic scene back in Photoshop. Um, I've played with some of the effects you've got in Blender for stuff like atmospherics, mist, this kind of thing, uh, which is all accessible both through some of the um, settings over here, uh, uh, in, indeed there's mist, as well as um, a mist effect I've added to a box that's surrounding this whole model. So that creates this sort of atmospheric perspective that show the attacks being much further away by them being less visible, which could be mist or could be sort of snow blowing around in this case. But what that does is it helps with the depth when we get back into Photoshop um, in terms of looking at it and realizing those attacks are much, much bigger than the things in the foreground, which is obviously also helped by the fact that we've got these layers of staggering stormtroopers sort of falling off. So this is what you can do with Blender. As I say, this is really, really powerful because, I mean, obviously I took a day or so to learn how to do this, um, but I'll be able to come back now and do pre-visualization work like this, mock-ups like this, pretty easily to just get things in place. And then I can come into render here, render the image, which I've done, and I'll go over to Photoshop and show you that in a moment and use that as a map and a basis for a composite. So coming back over here... This is what I've got. Let me just start with the render. So that's exactly what you just saw in Blender, um, which I've just rendered out. You can see it's great quality to work with. Um, this block here in the background was uh, my idea of kind of a smoke plume from a crashed snow speeder. Not sure on that yet. Um, I'm not sure it's gonna work compositionally, uh, in the picture, but you know, these are all things you can play with. Uh, and then this is what I've got. So it's still very much a work in progress, but you can see how that's played out in terms of some of those things with sizing, atmospheric perspective, all of which would have been very, very hard guesswork if I was just working in Photoshop alone to do this. Uh, I've still got a lot of work to do on this, as I say. It doesn't look right. It doesn't look quite realistic yet. There's still issues like over here with some shadows on this um, stock snow footage I've brought in for the ground here. I've done very, very poor work with sort of blending some snow into the trooper's feet. And equally, the troopers aren't um, that great in terms of how they're kind of sitting in the image. But certainly stuff like the adats look pretty good. I'm happy with those. Um, I'm, I'm playing with sort of color grading layers here just to see what a, a final result might look like. But by and large, I'm happy with the layout. And all of that is down to having a really good pre-visualization uh, map to work off, um, thanks to good old Blender here. So that's pretty much it. That's really all I wanted to cover for this video. Not to big on actual technique. It's more to give you an idea and kind of sh show you how my brain's ticking in terms of um, how to approach composites and things. So I hope you found this helpful. If you've got questions, suggestions, love to hear them below. If there's more you'd like to know about Blender, let me know. And as I learn more about it, I'll be sure to let you guys know here on the channel. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Check out all the other great videos I've been uploading on Photoshop manipulations, compositing, special effects, that kind of thing. Um, and I'll see you in the next video. Head to toyshooter.com for more tutorials, resources, and help 
with Photoshop compositing. You can also subscribe to my free newsletter by visiting shoot.toys in your browser or clicking on the link on screen. You can also follow my work on Instagram at instagram.com slash shoot.toys. Subscribe to the channel to watch a special subscriber only video, which you'll find on my channel page after subscribing. Lastly, you'll find links to all the places I've just mentioned in the description for this video below.